So we are down south of the river here in Lewisham, or I should call it New Lewisham, shouldn't I, with the amount of development going on. And I think the, the confluence of the River Quaggy, the best named river, I would say possibly in the world, and the Ravensbourne is somewhere over here. I think I can see it actually. Oh wow, yeah, look, there it is, just down there is the confluence between the Quaggy and the Ravensbourne. Wow. As we know, and I've said many, many times, the confluence of two rivers was a place of sacred worship in the pagan belief. So down there, votive offerings would have once been made, because we are in an ancient manner. And after these two rivers have conjoined, they then later flow into the Deptford Creek, and from there into the Thames, and then out to sea. And this is the walk that we'll be doing today. We're going to follow the River Quaggy back from this point here, back as far as we can. Um, I won't say we'll be going back to the source because, uh, well, we'll talk about more of that as we go. But um, we're certainly going to enjoy whatever walk we get along the River Quaggy, whatever the weather allows. The Quaggy rises out uh, sort of in the Bromley area, sort of just to the south of London, and then it flows through. I think it flows through quite a bit of open uh, land before it becomes a very urban river. I think those first bits of the Quaggy, the early bits where it rises, actually it's not called the Quaggy at all, it's the Kidbrook and it becomes the Quaggy, possibly I think that's the point we'll get to, I think around Mottingham is the point. I'll put a map here hopefully showing you that point and that's, where, that's the bit we'll probably do today is the urban Quaggy. <laughs> what I know, when I was first I remember, I distinctly remember first hearing about the Quaggy and it was via a wonderful bloke called Philip Ilson, who's a, a short film programmer. He created the London Short Film Festival and he's ubiquitous with short film programming. And I think we were doing an event and we were talking and he, he said, oh yeah, so you know the Quaggy. I was like, what? How did I miss the Quaggy? And this was a bit about, I don't know, about 12 years ago or so. So I became, <laughs> I've been mildly, I wouldn't say obsessed, but I've been like curious about this river ever since that moment. And I encountered it when I came down here to write a chapter for my book, This Other London. I think I uh, encountered the Quaggy slightly more into the centre of Lewisham. So we'll see what we can do today. We're just going to follow as much as we can. It's been raining all day today and it's going to rain all weekend. So we may get interrupted by the rain. We may lose the light because it's coming up for two o'clock. Sunset today is about 4.30 and you can't really see anything in the dark. You can't particularly see a river that is... Uh, a hidden river like that but it's going to be great no matter what I was really keen to get out here today I'm uh, looking forward to this and the, it does look like a delightful little stream here doesn't it but it doesn't reveal the fact that the Quaggy is considered to be a very polluted river obviously due to its urban you know its urban course and the amount of pollution it picks up along the way it's also the subject consequently of a number of sort of regeneration schemes and plans to clean it up and improve not just the quality of the water but the environment around the river. I guess this new little park here must be one of those um, schemes. I love that sign here on the bridge, no unauthorised access, which is acknowledging the fact that people must come and get down into the river. River hunters, you see, there's a lot of them around. And Lewisham has been a real centre of development, of sort of property development for a while. This was happening when I came down here for my book in 2012 and it's been going on ever since and it's, you know, I'm sure to people that remember Lewisham in the 80s it will be barely recognisable. And you can see here where the quag is running beside this busy road here and obviously be picking up all that runoff off the road. But it's still, look, it's still a really beautiful little river with trees sprouting from its banks. I've not been able to find an explanation of the name. All that I've been able to see is that it's been around for a long time and it started appearing in fiction in the 19th century. Lewisham, though, is a very ancient place. It's an Anglo-Saxon manor. At one point it was given by uh, King Alfred's niece to the um, Priory at Ghent, a Priory in Ghent, and it was then passed on through various other Anglo-Saxon kings to various other people before it came into Norman possession. And then I think Henry III it was who um, built a Priory here. 
So it's a, it's a notable place with very deep roots. I like the fact that in the 16th century it was referred to as Lusum or Lusam, which is very close to Lewisham to this very day. And it's a real hub, isn't it? Lewisham's a real, and there's real South London hubs. This is the bit here that I'm, uh, I saw when I did my, the walk for my book. That's a walk that went from Lewisham. Well, it went to Brixton in the end, but the plan was to go Tulse Hill, Hearn Hill Velodrome, Tulse Hill, Brixton. That was a great walk. Bits of that are on YouTube. I'll put lots of links below, including the link I did of the walk along the Ravensbourne, was along the Ravensbourne and then onto the Beck. The real point of that was to do the Beck, and that was with the wonderful Ian Miller. It's about five years ago, five, six years ago. So the quaggy must be continuing beneath the grounds here, right in front of us, literally where that white line is running, I think. Lewisham Town Centre over there with its street market and its clock tower. There's some beautiful old kind of like art deco type buildings down there, former department stores and cinemas. Our route is heading in this direction, I believe. Can't say I've ever been in the Lewisham Tavern. What's it like? Any good? I bet that looks like the kind of place that would have been a decent venue for bands once upon a time. That's a great ghost sign up there, isn't it? Look, Jay's Furniture. What a beauty. So we're going up here at Clarendon Rise, where I think we get a view of the river. In fact, I can see a bridge. And there's a, there's a great building here right on the river. I would say from this distance, it looks like it might be a Hindu temple. Of course, a Hindu temple by the river makes perfect sense, doesn't it? I think rivers are, are worshipped in the Hindu religion, I believe. I could be wrong. Yeah, right next to the temple, we have the quaggy. I tell you what, I've only been going about 20 minutes. This is already feels like a classic walk, <laughs> even if it ended here. This is, I love this. So I'm going to go down here along Gilmore Road, and the quag is running behind these houses to my left here. But we should get another view of the river quite soon. The thing with urban river walks is there is always a bit of meandering, like the stream itself. A walk must meander through the streets. And I love the fact that Meander is the name of a river in Turkey. Isn't that incredible? There's a book called Meander that I have unread at home. And here, just by the Gilmore Road trunk sewer, just through there, through the railings. That's the quaggy down there, the other side of those railings. In this cross street here, we find the quaggy flowing behind the buildings. So I'm going to go along the main road for um, a short distance before then turning off and I think getting into a little park where we can walk beside the river. And, and the quaggy does go through quite a few open spaces, so I think this urban section here, very urban bit, is possibly a little bit of um, a little bit of an exception actually we were only on that main road for about <laughs> 10 yards because now we're going to go along Weirdale Road do you reckon that's related to the river maybe Weirdale or Weir it's a different spelling of Weir but it could be Weirdale Road couldn't it and we meet the river once more here this is a, a lovely little peaceful section isn't it you can hear the gurgling of the river as it bounces over the stones. I mean, this part of South London is topographically very, very rich, and particularly for its river valleys. You know, the Ravensbourne, the Pool, the Beck, the Chaffinch Brook. Here we have the Quaggy. It creates a really, really fascinating landscape, a really great landscape for walking as well. I really do love finding 
information in the landscape rather than just sort of plundering books and the internet before heading out. And this little municipal kind of bit of signage here, Welcome to Manor Park, opened in 1966. This former pig farm sits on the banks of the Quaggy River behind Victorian buildings. The Quaggy rises in Locks Bottom and travels 17 kilometres, eventually feeding into the Thames via the River Ravensbourne. This is the interesting bit, that you can find anywhere else. Its fast flowing clay stream supports wildlife such as eels, dragonflies, kingfishers and yellow flowering iris. I wonder if there still are eels in the Quaggy. And did they ever find their way to an eel and pie shop? I doubt it. I think eels now, wild eels, are, are protected, aren't they? I love that, that there was a pig farm here in Lewisham in the 20th century. I don't know when it stopped being a pig farm, but the fact there was a pig farm here, certainly it might not have been until 1966, but there would have been one here in, say, maybe the 30s and the 40s. That's incredible, isn't it? And it just shows you there were these sort of pockets, these surviving pockets of rurality in London, right in well into the 20th century. <laughs> I love things like that. And also it's interesting to note, isn't it? It says Quaggy River rather than River Quaggy. And likewise, I think it's Ravensbourne River, isn't it? And Pool River. So I don't know what it is about the rivers in this part of South London where they're named in that way. It could just be a little local quirk or there might be something else to it, I'm not sure. And what a lovely little park this is. This is a real treasure, isn't it? There's a little cafe here as well. This is a, a, an absolute treasure, isn't it? Apart from six months living in New Cross Gate 20 years ago, no, what am I about? 30 years ago, Lord. Sounds bad, doesn't it? Um, I've always been a strictly north of the river person, really, and I, I spent six months in West London. Apart from, so apart from that, I've been East and North London for the rest of my entire time in London. But I really get the South London thing, particularly when I've been doing the walks for these videos. Every time I come south of the river, it really opens my eyes to why people love South London. You know, because well, it's well worn, isn't it? You either go north or south. No, I don't know many people that oscillate between the two. And the South London people I know are really passionate about South London. And if they had to move, they really long to get back here. And I get it. I do get it now. It's it is really lovely and it's a lot more, feels a lot more kind of, I don't know, a lot more residential, a lot more kind of neighbourhood focused. And it's, um, yeah, it's lovely and topographically it's really, really interesting. It's quite beautiful. So South London people, I understand why you love South London. Just a little bit more uh, road walking, street walking, before we encounter the river once again in an open space. I hope, it looks like it from the map anyway. Nice looking little uh, row of shops here in Staplehurst Road. There's a pub down there that looks very, very appealing, but uh, particularly for a wet autumn afternoon. But I'm heading in a different direction. I'm heading along here and I think we can see the river. Actually, I can see the bridge just on the right there. Can you see it? So that's, uh, that's Hither Green Station down there. This must be the kind of bougie bit of Lewisham, eh? I reckon so. I don't really know this area at all, so those of you who live around here probably think I'm a, a fool for not knowing that, but it's very nice. Very nice old sort of Victorian houses. Very sort of, hmm. You know, nice. So here's the Quaggy once more, just before it runs beneath Manor Road, which is here. And then it's going to make its way to Manor House Gardens, which is where we're going to go via Thornwood Road. Here we have Manor House Gardens which looks absolutely lovely, doesn't it? It's a legacy of the manor house here. It's the gardens of a once grand house that was owned by numerous notable people, including um, Thomas Baring of Baring's Bank. I've said Thomas Baring there. I've kind of gone a bit rogue because I haven't looked at my notes. If it's not Thomas, I'll correct it on the screen. I just thought he should be called Thomas. And here is the Quaggy beside 
uh, manor house gardens. So I was kind of half right. <laughs> it was sold by Thomas Baring to the London County Council in the 1880s, but it was purchased by um, Francis Baring originally. So, and these gardens were laid out in 1773, so they've got some proper heritage to them. And it's a real feature, isn't it, of London parks that a large number of them are former sort of stately homes that were owned either by members of the aristocracy or wealthy merchants and bankers and people like that. And that the parks are the former grounds and sometimes the stately homes are still there, the large homes that have become municipal kind of utilities like community centres, art galleries, cafes, offices, that kind of thing. So this must be the old 18th century manor house, which I believe contains manor house library as well as a, a daycare. The information board tells us that these are a pair of uh, French naval cannons that were cast in 1763 and they're from a, a captured French vessel that was being towed up the Thames but then sank and these cannons were salvaged and they were originally used as gateposts at the entrance to the manor house before they're in the process of being restored. Aren't they wonderful? I'm looking forward to reading this uh, leaflet by the Lee Manor Society. Local libraries are uh, usually really good places for local history information. Well, they are, not usually, they, they almost exclusively are, but they've often got great leaflets. And over the years, over the 30 odd years, I've collected quite a few of those and used them on my walks. So this is gonna be one for the pub afterwards. That's a really lovely library in there. And um, local libraries are increasingly under threat from cuts, you know, there's a lot of cuts. So. You know, use your local libraries because it's a question of use them or, or lose them, I'm afraid, in a lot of cases. And they're really fantastic. They're great places. This is where the, the quaggy enters the park. I Meaning for us, this is where it exits. And we have to go under the, through the streets for a, a, a little while before hitting another open space that I hope we can get access to, although I'm not 100% sure. Here's the, the quaggy running beside or beneath really a very busy road once more but it looks like there is access to a little open space here which is uh, an unexpected treat. I, I don't think there is access on the other side that's the only problem so I have to go around go around the corner here but you can see look here's our quaggy. It's just coming up for four o'clock and uh, the daylight has really gone. It's a bit, I mean, it's been a pretty gloomy day anyway because of all the rain, but um, yeah, there's not a lot of light left. The problem we're going to have pretty soon is the, the gates to the public parks are going to be shut. So we'll go for as long as we can. Eh? Lee Green Fire Brigade Station built in 1906 and what a fine building it is. Into Meadows Court Road and see if we can get access to the river by the sports ground here. I'm not that optimistic and it started to, uh, to rain again as well. I've realised that was the wrong way to go but I can see a route ahead that takes me to Blackheath Park. I just hope I can get there before the gates closed, if there are gates. We, uh, we cross back over the Quaggy, which is just uh, beneath that bridge there, up the hill here and turn right, and that should lead us into Blackheath Park. And I would say that we're now in uh, Blackheath after crossing the Quaggy. The Quaggy is perhaps a border between Eltham and uh, Blackheath, maybe? I don't know, I'm just making that up. And Blackheath has always been a kind of very posh part of South London. I have walked across Blackheath in the company of Andrew Cotting, uh, Ian Sinclair and Anne, I 
I will get your surname wrong, Anne. I think it's uh, Salon de Lyon. I can't, I'll put it up here anyway. Um, and we looked at some of the tumuli on Black Heath. Is that the burial mounds over there, Anne? They are. All the men have disappeared into the trees. Is that the, um, the Paleolithic burial chambers? Paleolithic? The Paleolithic burial yeah. chambers over here. Julian Cope explained these to me once when we were down here. He was taking um, magic mushrooms. I can't remember what it was, but there was garlic involved. But these undulations here are pre-Paleolithic. And that, the dome up there, the, um, the onion, it's a view straight across the Seine. You can just see a little bit of the Centre Pompidou. Apparently, according to him. That was a great walk. So this is Manor Way and the gates into this private estate were open so we should be able to hopefully access Blackheath Park which is just up here. Quaggy Walk. The river is nearby. In fact the river is down in that direction there on the other side of those houses. I don't know if we're going to get into the park though. I can't see access anywhere. The river is down there somewhere, the other side of that tree line. But I, don't, I can't see anybody there, so maybe it's actually not a public park. I've probably got this horribly wrong. Look in the comments for people telling me where I should have gone to get access to this bit of open space. But I did look online to see if there was a kind of river quaggy walk, because I'm aware with urban rivers that sometimes access can be a little bit tricky in places. And, you know, with all the zigzags, there sometimes are more direct routes. But I couldn't really find anything apart from one that sort of went around a park further down near where it's sort of uh, the River Kid, so, um, or the Kid Brook, sorry, not the River Kid, that'd be good, wouldn't it? It should be a River Kid. It's the Kid Brook, which is really the Kid Brook, but, but this has been a great walk, that's all I can say. I mean, I can sense that we haven't got long because it's getting dark, isn't it? And uh, can't see in the dark. I mean, people sometimes say, why don't you do more night walks? Filming in the dark is really hard. It's really hard. You have to have a really powerful light to illuminate anything at any distance in the dark. And people don't like you walking around the streets shining bright lights across roads for some reason. I don't know what's wrong with them. But I think we can go around and see the quaggy once more as it goes across the road. Basically, the road now is pushing me a long way away from the quaggy. It's going to be quite a schlep to get back to any kind of view of it. So I'm going to double back on myself to see if there is access to that park. The map shows that there is. I didn't see it, but let's give it another go. Otherwise, it's the best shot I've got anyway. You can see that little road or path there that leads into Blackheath Park. It's clearly on here, but I can see it in this road. So we're going to have another look for it because it cuts down and comes throughout throughout the road otherwise we won't get there basically so this locked gate here and the little road behind it that is the road on that map so this is clearly an environment agency or, or water or Thames water access road that's a bit frustrating isn't it it's a shame to make a mistake at the end of the walk but that's all part of the narrative it's all part of the story the great Ian Sinclair once said uh, a very apt thing to me when we were doing a walk uh, down in Tilbury. I think that was last summer, wasn't it? And we, you know, we missed out a number of the kind of heritage features. And he was like, but that's got nothing to do with this walk. The walk is the walk. I.e. the story of the walk is, the, is what happens on the walk, not what you think in anticipation will happen. The walk is the walk. I love that. And it's very apt in this case here. In my mind, we carried on, we went through Cater Park and we got further along the Quaggy, but we didn't. We ended up in this private estate here, you know, reaching a locked gate. And there, there is a route, I'm sure, where you go around the park on the other way. The way I started to go, actually, I thought, oh no, I've gone the wrong way. Actually, that would have worked out okay. There you go. These things happen. It's always, you know, that's the great thing with river walks, particularly urban river walks. That's why I love them so much. And this is a classic for me. I have really loved this walk. Really, really loved it. The Quaggy has definitely delivered in spades. And I'm so glad I came down here today. So thank you so much for joining me on that walk. Classic, a classic river walk. And finally, yeah, finally I am down here in South London and there'll be more South London walks before the year is done for sure. So 
Thank you for coming on the walk. Thank you to my supporters on Patreon. And as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. Genuinely, wherever that may be. I mean, obviously I revealed a bit of a kind of shortlist <laughs> down there on the beach at Walton on the Nays, but who knows, who knows? Have a great week, take care, bye-bye.